Einstein's argument. We consider again our atoms, and this time we're going to use the thermal equilibrium. We're going to really make uh, use of that um, fact. So again, we have level B and level A, and this is Einstein's argument. Argument. And and we're going to have now populations. If we discuss equilibrium, we can consider a system in a box, and there's a few billion atoms, and there's some atoms whose electron is going to be in state B, some atoms whose electrons are going to be in state A. Let's call these numbers NB and NA. And we also have photons at temperature T. I have a beta parameter, 1 over the Boltzmann constant times T. So this is the process we're going to consider. So what's going to happen? If we came up from the intuition that we've built from 806, we would think, OK, there's going to be absorption process and stimulated emission process. And between the two, they're going to be able to reach equilibrium. We don't believe this is not a process that can equilibrate. So this would be our intuition. The intuition for people that uh, lived at the beginning of last century was rather different. Uh, they felt that there would be absorption process and there was spontaneous emission. The thing that you probably intuitively would think, if you are at a high level, you spontaneously decay. So the thing that was not known to them was the stimulated emission. That is what Einstein is credited for discovering here. People felt, and I think the paper of Einstein makes clear, that the intuition is that you have spontaneous emission, in which spontaneously, by some kind of instability, the higher state goes to the bottom, and you have absorption. But then Einstein figured out that you couldn't achieve equilibrium in that way. Well, the way we're going to do it, we're going to put the two things we know, the absorption and the stimulated emission and see that we don't get it to work, the equilibrium, but then when we add the spontaneous emission, we will. And uh, as it turns out, the spontaneous emission is a little harder to calculate. If we were to do it in uh, 806, it probably would be a matter of two lectures uh, involving electromagnetic field. So we will not do it. But the good thing is that Einstein's argument tells you the speed of spontaneous emission, the rate of spontaneous emission, in terms of these rates of stimulated emission or absorption. So it does the calculation for you by some other thermodynamical means. So we're going to use here three facts. One is that the three facts, one is the populations are in equilibrium, in equilibrium. So Na dot, is, they stop changing, is equal to zero, and Nb dot is equal to zero. They don't stop changing because nothing happens. All the time there will be emission and there will be absorption, but if you reach equilibrium, the number of atoms remain the same on every state. So that's our statement that the populations achieve equilibrium. The second statement is that the equilibrium is thermodynamical. So it's thermal. 
equilibrium. That is NB over NA, for example, is the Boltzmann factor e to the minus beta EB over e to the minus beta EA. And this is equal to e to the minus beta h bar omega b a. Uh, you get e to the minus beta e b minus e a, but e b minus e a is h bar omega b a. So that's thermal equilibrium. And the last thing that we need is a statement about the photons. What do they do when they have equilibrium? And that uh, was known already due to the work of Planck and others, black body equilibrium. So we need to know something about the thermal radiation. And the way one describes this is in terms of, of function u of omega, d omega. In the black body radiation, there are, at a given temperature, there are photons with very little energy. There are some largest number of photons with some energy associated with the temperature, and then it decays. So you have photons of all energy. So if you want a description of what's going on in black body radiation, you can consider the energy in the photons in a frequency range. But you even must be more precise. It is the energy per unit volume in a frequency range. Because if it's different, the energy if your black body cavity is this room or it's a little box. So it's an energy per volume per frequency range. And that's what this quantity is. So let me write it. Energy per unit volume in the frequency range dw. In other words, it's kind of a proxy for the number of photons available. All the photons have at some free at some value of the frequency have energy e omega. So if you know the energy you basically are getting here the number of photons with uh, frequency omega in that range, per unit volume, all that stuff. Uh, so uh, this, this has a formula. And the formula that was known to people was these quantities, and then an omega cube, the omega over e to the beta h bar omega minus 1. So this is the basis of the calculation. What do we do? We have to consider the possible processes. OK, so our processes are absorption. And in this case, we go from A to B. And let's try to write a rate for them. So how, what would the rate depend on? Well, here's a, some little assumptions. Certainly, if you don't have particles in the A state, you cannot have this process. So this process, the total rate that we observe in the box will depend on Na. The more particles you have in, in the state A, the, more, uh, the larger the probability that you get the transitions and the larger the rate. It will also be affected by the number of photons available at that um, 
frequency that can produce the transition in proportional to that. And finally, the quantity that our study of perturbation theory will tell us about, but uh, at that time, of Einstein was not known. It's a, a transition coefficient, BAB, he called it. And this is the unknown one. And this is what we don't know. We know U, we assume we know NA. This is the transition rate per atom and then multiplied by the number of atoms. So this is transition rate per atom. Then we have the process of spontaneous emission. And then it would be another coefficient, BBA. And it would depend on the number of particles that are in the state B, because spontaneous emission is a transition from B to A. It will, we call it, uh, not spontaneous, stimulated, I'm sorry, stimulated emission. This is the one we're considering. It's stimulated by the radiation, so it's also proportional to the number of photons present and proportional to the number of atoms that can be convinced to do the transition times another coefficient, BBA. So this is, I think, what we in 806 would do. We would consider these two processes an attempt to make it work. And let's see what we get there. We're trying to get equilibrium, so we want the transitions to equilibrate and therefore the populations not to change. So let's look, for example, you could look at either one, but you can look at n, b, dot. It should be zero, but it's equal to the rate of absorption minus the rate of stimulated emission. You see, because the number of particles in B change because you get some new particles in state B due to the absorption process, and it happens with this rate. And you lose some particle because uh, some atoms do the transition from the higher level to the lower level. So what is the rate of absorption? We have it here. It's this one, B. A, B, U of omega, B, A, N, A. And this one is B, B, A, the same U of omega, B, A, N, B. And we can factor the U out. And this is the wrong calculation, I must say, because uh, we're missing that extra process that was intuitive to Einstein, but um, to us is a little less clear. NB times U of omega BA. OK, I can do a one more little thing. I can factor an NA. And this becomes BAB minus BBA. to the minus beta h bar omega b a u of omega b a. OK. I use the ratio of n a over n b being thermodynamical. So n b over n a was used from uh, point 0.2 to get this. And this should be equal to 0. 
But this equation can't be satisfied. It's uh, what do you have here? You should be able to equilibrate at any temperature. On the other hand, what is our intuition about these quantities? BAB and BBA. They should be temperature independent. These are properties of the geometry of those states and the overlaps of the wave functions. These are atomic physics properties of the levels of the particles. We will calculate them. And uh, you know, here is the input of how many photons there are, how many atoms there are. And those, the number of photons certainly depend on the temperature. The number of atoms for equilibrium depend on the temperature. But this is a factor that says, well, how likely is the transition once you have a photon and once you have an atom? And that depends, like we did for the ionization, in calculating some matrix elements that are totally independent of temperature. So these numbers are totally independent of temperature. And we're asking this to be 0, which requires this factor to be 0. And this depends on temperature. So you cannot attain equilibrium with this way. So it's uh, impossible to satisfy for all temperatures. Impossible for all temperatures given that BAB and BBA are constants. So we're missing a process. This is the process that Einstein thought was intuitive, the process of spontaneous em emission. So here is, uh, so we add one more process. Uh, it's called uh, spontaneous emission. emission. And uh, it's a process also from B to A. And it's going to have a rate. But it's not going to depend, that rate, on the number of photons, because it's happening independently of the photons. So we don't have this U factor. We do have the NB, because each of the B atoms can spontaneously decay. But we don't have the U factor. So, so what do we have? A rate, which is determined by a coefficient that Einstein called it A. That's why the name A and B coefficients of Einstein, A times NB. So that's the spontaneous emission rate per atom multiplied by the number of atoms. So we go back to our equation. Rate of absorption minus rate of stimulated emission minus the rate of spontaneous emission. So I'll write it here. 0 is equal to nb dot equal minus a and B, that's the spontaneous emission. We we'll write it first, and then we we'll write the other two. B, B, A, N, B, U, omega, B, A, minus plus B, A, B, U of omega, B, A, N, A. 